Good morning, everyone. Welcome to join this session. Um, how about your summit so far? How about the lunch? How about the party on Tuesday? <laughs> uh, today, my topic will walk you through how to use the um, OpenStack Valence, this project to compose hardware resources on, on the fly. So this is joint project. Um, Intel and 99 Cloud work together, and many other uh, vendors we are working on the Valence project. Uh, today, I will uh, first of all I will introduce the data center challenges today. Uh, the dramatically, uh, dramatically data uh, increase and cause our data center have much challenges on handle this data and process this data. And then I will introduce the uh, Intel Rack Scale Design Technology. Third, I will talk about the Valence project, which is announced last summit in Barcelona. And fourth, I will talk about the uh, use cases, typical use cases of uh, when, when you are using Valence can help us address what kind of problems. At last, I will show you some demos. Um, digital transformation driving the data center scale, up, scale out. According to the uh, survey and investigation, by 2020, there will be uh, 50 billion connected devices. So the, the data center have to have, have to have the responsibility and capability to process this data. And a lot of business, they will grow up, including the uh, AI and IoT, such kind of new uh, business and industry would like to use the data center to help us to analyze this data, which means the data center cannot uh, use the traditional technology to help us to uh, process those data because when we uh, process data, we will require more flexible and low cost agility to process those data to implement the uh, AI in our business. For example, uh, some financial industry, they have very high frequency trade and they need a fraud detection. So that is a real time fraud detection. In the traditional data center, they we will do it in some of, uh, offline process and analysis the, the result maybe in minutes or in, in several hours. But in the future, we will like to detect the fraud maybe in seconds. And from the uh, life science tech, uh, perspective, the genomic research, we, we, need, uh, we will like to analyze all the uh, people gene uh, data in the data center and help us to detect uh, cancer, maybe some, some uh, pain in, in, in your genomic data. And the government have a lot of data in their data center, but do not know how to use it. And by have more agility in our data center, we can provide those capability to government help them to improve our uh, normal daily life. So uh, the, with the growth of the cloud and the AI analysis cap requirements, the data center have to transfer to a, a, a more, more uh, with more agi agil uh, agilities data center. The open solutions will help us to accelerate the piece of the uh, innovation. Okay, next. So um, the business, just I mentioned, the business needs to reduce the operational and capital expense and help us to deliver new business in minutes or in seconds. The optimize the data center according to the telemetry data and in real time analysis, just like I mentioned, the uh, financial banking, they are using the data to do the fault detection and address the application which the workload need more agilities. I can give a, 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 maybe an example here. Some uh, application, they, they will have uh, 
they will need to scale out and sh or shrink in minutes like the online commercial uh, applications. When they first launch, they do not know the demand of the uh, application. Maybe in several hours, a lot of people seeing this application very interested. He will log into the application and buy things in the commercial, uh, online commercial platform. So the, the, the requirement will huge increase. That will need our infrastructure to increase scale out very quickly, maybe in seconds, to fulfill this requirement. If your infrastructure fails to do that, then you will lose the customers. And when we scale out the, uh, the infrastructure, we cannot interrupt our services. Because when some currently the data center technology has the capability to scale out, but it's not so smoothly. We ha have some downtime in minutes or in, in some hours to implement the scale out. But in the future, our data center must to have the capability to scale out very sm smoothly without the interruption when you put in more data uh, hardware or storage network resources into the data center. So the data center are facing significant changes to trying to meet the demands of the explosion of the data. And the uh, continuous uh, connectivities to the platform for real-time mobility and uh, flex and enterprise management is very important. Uh, the current market trend indicate that the servers are still under very low utilization. For example, right, uh, in China, uh, in China uh, IT industry, the CPU utilization normally may be 50% below 50% off. And with the data increase uh, very quickly, how can we co co uh, reduce the TCO by increase the utilization? And so we can avoid more capital expense, uh, exp uh, expense in our investment. So um, how can we resolve these challenges of data centers? I think in the keynotes, Mark has uh, gave us um, um, uh, signals about the um, future involvement. That's the uh, composable, composable uh, infrastructures and cloud native applications. I believe uh, you guys hear the uh, composable Composable, um, composable infrastructure. I don't know if you um, understand it means, I think from my perspective, it means both software and hardware. From the software perspective, which means the OpenStack project that must support the composable capabilities. You can get the Ironic or get Neutron, they can run standalone with other open source. You can compose them together to fulfill your requirements. That is the composable from the software perspective. How about from the hardware perspective? Right now, when we scale out our infrastructure, we have to purchase more servers, more storage, more network devices, and put them into the data center. And we have some um, workers, they help us to um, set up the devices and connect all the cables and test the power if okay. If we have such a capability platform help us to, we can just call an API, all those hardware resources can come possible together. That would be great, right? So from my perspective, I, I think the future infrastructure, including um, software and hardware, they are all composables. After we have the composable infrastructure, then we can, um, implement our cloud native application beyond them. Eventually, we will have uh, our application to uh, in, uh, implement their agility and they can scale, scale out very uh, smoothly without interruption when we um, uh, put in more hardware resources into the data center. So, uh, I think the uh, Intel RSD is uh, 
such kind of hard uh, the technology to help us to um, putting all the this putting consider all the compute storage and networking as as a disaggregate resources and then all the these resources can be composed on the fly to meet various needs in the data center or a cloud environment. The disaggregation, in addition to the following hardware refresh at different rates for each storage compute and networking, they support more uh, efficient resource utilizations. Image, imagine um, a cloud which have the capability to compose those hardware on the fly, then you can grow a shrink to meet the uh, usage very quickly and without interruption. So the RST technology, they provide the uh, four significant values, flexible, mag uh, manageable, and e economic, and open. What's flexible? Flexible means you can click and uh, very dynamic to config and customize systems uh, or server to meet the uh, requirement. For example, if I would like to do a normal uh, IT hosting, I, can, I maybe just need a server with several CPUs, maybe a um, uh, hundred gigabyte uh, memory and hundreds gigabyte storage. But if I, my business grow up, I need to analyze the user behavior in my application. I would like to add more uh, servers with the uh, GPU devices so I can do the um, user behavior analysis on the GPU. So at that time, one option is I have to purchase more GPU with, with more servers, right? But with the composable flash uh, capability, if I have a GPU pool, then I can just hop out the GPU to the existing servers. Let the server have the capability to do the uh, AI things, right? So that's what the flexible means. For the manageable uh, value, it will help with the, hard, with the API, we can manage the hardware resources very uh, convenient very convenient to manage the hardware resources. And we can tackle the hyperscale complexity with the powerful and modernized API-based software. That the software will also help us to discover uh, inventories, compose, and monitor do the damage in, in those hardwares. It's a unified hardware uh, platform to help us to do the operation, reduce the uh, operation efforts. And uh, because of the flexible and manageable uh, value, we can have re reduce further our TCO, so we have uh, saved a lot of money. And what's more, the API standards is based on a Redfish API. It's an industry standard. It's very open standard, and a lot of company contribute to that uh, API spec. So. Uh, With the RSD technology, it will help us to evolution the data center to, in the future, saving, the, uh, saving our, our money and increase the utilization, uh, utilization and, and help us to provide more uh, performance, uh, optimize our data center in, for, to the applications. Today's data center, they are still built on the uh, traditional architecture where they take days uh, and weeks to provision new services. And when, especially when we launch a totally new uh, business, we, we have to um, take weeks to purchase the uh, hardware. But with the RSD technology, we can compose the hardware we need in minutes So um, we, let's take a look at the uh, um, software management foundation. 
at the uh, bottle, we can see the, it's the compute resources, storage resources, and network resources. And beyond is the um, RSD uh, components. It consists of two, majorly two parts. The PSME proof system management engine, it will help us to control the, uh, the port, the rack drawer, or slats. And the PSME is fully describe all the disaggregate components in its uh, domain. And the RMM, it will describe the rack level spec data for power and thermal. For the orchestration layer, we can integrate the technology with a lot of um, um, cloud or, uh, technology, such as OpenStack is one, one of the typical um, cloud solution. We have uh, announced the Valence project, which is one of the OpenStack Big Ten project to talk with the pod manager with ICE API to control the PSME further to control the compute resources, storage, and network resources. All the uh, pod, manage, pod manager it will expose the Redfish API, to is, which is an industry standard API to help us to control. So the OpenStack, he will use the Redfish API to talk with the pod manager. What, um, I don't know if you guys know about what's Redfish. Can you show your hands if you heard about it? Grace? <laughs> uh, Redfish actually is a, a DMTF, the uh, Distributed Management Task Force standard uh, capable of managing multi-node servers, uh, API specifications. He, the, uh, tag, the goal of the Redfish is to replace the um, IPMI uh, over LAN that technologies will help us to control all the um, hardware and collect the data from uh, such as the thermal uh, or fan or some sensor data. We can all use the Redfish to control and get the data. All the devices, uh, all, all the devices implement the Redfish API can be control in the uh, OpenStack Valence project because Valence project is uh, implement this, uh, use the standard Redfish API to control it. It's schema based and human readable. I will show a demo later on. You can see how we can talk with, uh, by using, talk with the RSD by using the Redfish API. So uh, let's show you what's Valence. Valence is uh, open source. Uh, it's an open stack Big Ten project. It's a collection of uh, software which support the com uh, consumptions of the RSD resources in the cloud. It can integrate. Uh, it provides the uh, Valence API, which is a Python-based demo based on the uh, fra uh, Flex framework to expose the RESTful API. And the um, API service communicate with the pod manager through the uh, Redfish specification. And we also have implemented a Python Valence client, provide the uh, client CLI command line to help you to interact with the um, ISD. We also have uh, implemented several uh, plugins to help, help other projects in OpenStack, such as the Ironic or Horizon, they can control the ISD resources. In the end, I will show you a demo how we can use Ironic to control the, um, the ISD uh, servers. Valence also supports horizontal scalability by um, managing multiple pod managers. This is the architecture of the uh, Valence. You can see Valence ha currently have, have has a very simple web UI. You can use the web UI to compose node and uh, use it as a normal server. And the web server will talk to the uh, API controller. The API controller will use the Redfish RESTful API interface to talk with the uh, RSD. And we also support uh, 
to integrate with the deployment tools. In for our case, 99 Cloud has uh, um, has uh, built our deployment tool based on Cora. So, I, in the in the demo, you can also see how we can deploy the uh, OpenStack and over Cloud by using the Cora with RSD. We uh, in the end, you can see we, we also see uh, have plugins in Ironic. Currently, we implement the we have the uh, driver in Ironic to talk with the RSD. So the uh, general workflow of uh, of the uh, valence is that user can use the client valence client to uh, compose a note from uh, the RSD resources, and he will return a composed node to the user, and the user will enroll it in the Ironic. And Ironic can sync the, uh, take, on, take control, uh, take over the node, and we will control its, its power, and, con and, can, and then we can use the Ironic to deploy OS in that node. After the user finish, uh, you finish, uh, the node he can release the node from the ironic and then release the user can release the node from the uh, RSD by using the valence client. So uh, there are three typical uh, scenarios about using the valence. First is you can use the valence um, standalone. Uh, with um, um, with several, for example, with with your deployment solutions to provision uh, under clouds, which means you have a seed cloud. The seed cloud is composed; it, it, it contains the valence and your deployment solution. And the valence will help you to compose the node. After you finish the composition, you use your deployment tool to deploy several clouds in your data centers. In the uh, 99 Cloud, we combine the valence and color together. We can use the color to deploy the nodes which is, is returned by uh, valence. Also, after you finish the uh, cloud deployment, you can, in your cloud administration uh, uh, admin page, you can also integrate valence in your Ironic. So the Ironic can manage the uh, Bare metal from which is composed by the uh, valence. The third is about the uh, storage provision. In the RSD 2.1 API, it will ha uh, it will support the dynamic approved uh, NVMe provision. So we can just call a uh, 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 RSD API through the valence. It will help us to compose a uh, uh, NVMe storage and hop up to the server we need and then we can use it as a bare metal in our cloud environment. So uh, it's demo time. I will show you some uh, demo video. First one is uh, from the command line style. You will see how we can use the command line to compose node and use the caller to deploy uh, uh, under cloud, uh, over cloud in, in our environment. Okay, first uh, I, we will uh, source the uh, keystone and then we will uh, use the valence client to compose a node. We delete the existing node first and then we compose one.
when you compose a node, you need to uh, input the memory, uh, CPU, and storage you need for the node. And in this case, we compose a node with a memory uh, four gigabyte and storage 50 uh, gigabyte storage. It will help us to uh, select a, a node for us. And now I will show you the uh, Redfish API, you can see from the, um, the Redfish uh, API spec to see we already composed a node. This is the schema of the Redfish. And the node is using the remote disk target in the uh, RSD. And then we will hand over the composed node to Ironic, so we can use the Ironic and caller to deploy uh, all-in-one OpenStack in that target target node. First of all, we have to enroll. After you enroll the node, Ironic will take over the node. He will, first of all, Ironic will sync the power stage status of the node. So this one actually is, you can regard it as a seed cloud. It, we can manage the bare metal which is just composed from valence. And in this seed cloud, we can deploy it. Deploy, uh, you can see there is a new hybrid NOAA. Um, Hypervisor shows in, in that table, and we can launch that uh, launch a new instance. Eventually, it will install a 
CentOS in that composed node, and we will pass some uh, script into uh, when it pull up, it will be uh, in installed as an another OpenStack cloud. We will pass some in initial script. So it's uh, another real way when the ironic take over the node, it will reboot the system and load the uh, kernel and run disk. We can pass it very quickly. And after the system is uh, reboot, we get the system from, from the uh, ironic. We will run a uh, use the caller to deploy the system as a uh, over cloud. So after the uh, deployment, you can raise it over cloud. So this is two di different OpenStack cloud. Okay, this is for the demo. When you use the command line, I will show you another integrate with the uh, our GUI. So our GUI is uh, use the valence client to implement, uh, to talk with the uh, RSD. So you can see we have one pod manager in our environment and one compute services. You can see the status in our dashboard. We can also add other pod managers, which help to scale out the uh, horizontal scale out. I'm sorry. Go back to this. So you will see the uh, online one is online, one is offline in, in the GUI. And you can also see how many nodes you have composed in, in your uh, pod manager. And if the node is export to the Ironic, and which is uh, take over by Ironic, we can compose a node by a wizard. This process is actually similar to what you just uh, see, uh, saw in, in the uh, command line. You input the name of the nodes and input the calls, memories, disk size.
So in the uh, export action, you can hand over the node to the ironic. So the following uh, process is similar to what you have uh, in the last demo I just showed. You can uh, find a node in the hypervisor. There is, will be a, a new uh, bare metal hypervisor show up in the uh, hypervisor tab, and you can deploy it uh, by using the uh, Nova launch instances. OK, I think uh, this is all the demo I just show and uh, any questions you have? Any questions? Uh, could you please clarify, RSD is a product that's available now? Is that something Intel is providing now? Yes. Okay. It's providing now. Actually, um, several hardware vendors, they are providing RSD uh, comparable hardware servers, such as the uh, Ericsson and uh, Inspire, Huawei, as I know. And uh, for software vendors, they has also uh, has their uh, solutions to manage the RSD. And from the uh, OpenStack ecosystem, Valence is uh, the project to help to um, call, uh, interact with the RSD API. And you can also use the standard Redfish API to uh, talk with the RSD. And, and what are the special hardware requirements to be supportive of this from a hardware perspective? Um, actually, it's a, a standard, standard uh, rack server uh, with some um, some con hardware con uh, control plan inside. Like I just showed you the PSME and RAM, that kind of component you have to install in your hardware so you can uh, enable the RSD uh, functions. Of course, with the uh, uh, the NVMe or some GPU provision uh, functions, you have you have to have your hardware support, such as the PCIe switch the kind of de devices. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you today. <laughs>